Good evening and welcome to this Tuesday, November 19th, 2019 meeting of the Raymore Planning and Zoning Commission. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let me remind commissioners, please make sure your microphone is lighted green and speak into the mic for the record. And we'll call roll. Commissioner Wiggins. Present. Commissioner Armstrong. Present. Commissioner Bowie. Commissioner Ackland. Present. Commissioner Pfizer. Present. Commissioner Peterman. Present. Commissioner Urquia. Present. Mayor Turnbow. Present. And Commissioner Faulkner is present. We do have a quorum. We have no personal appearances scheduled this evening and two items on the consent agenda. And I suppose if you can word a motion very cleverly, we could have a motion to approve consent agenda with noted corrections to the minutes or we could deal with those items separately as you wish. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda um, noting the minute corrections that have been provided for the October 15th plan 2019 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. I'll second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Urquia, second by Commissioner Peterman to approve the consent agenda with noted corrections to the minutes from our October 15th meeting. Does that sound right? Okay, consent, all those in favor, raise a hand please. We got eight in favor, none opposed, no abstentions. Chairman, okay. I just wanted to state that I did, uh, did watch the meeting so I felt uh, comfortable voting on the minutes tonight. Right, and I will also state since I was absent from the meeting that I followed that and read through it and figured, well, there's no reason I shouldn't vote on the uh, consensus since it included case 19001. So hopefully that's all legal and we are good to go. All right, nothing this evening under unfinished business. So that takes us right quickly into new business. We have three items this evening. The first would be election of officers and just a very quick reminder, as we probably all know, we have three elected officer positions for the commission, uh, one year term, we have a chair, we have a vice chair, who obviously is the backup when the chair can't be here. And we have a secretary whose very important business is to sign documents with legal authority for the commission. And those positions are currently filled by commissioners Faulkner, Pfizer, and Peterman. So uh, as you wish, I would entertain a motion uh, for officers for the 2020 year. I was going to say I can I can break this deadlock in a minute, but I hated to steal the thunder. Uh, I'll go ahead and um, make a motion to nominate Commissioner Faulkner as chair, Commissioner Pfizer as vice chair, and Commissioner Peterman as secretary. Can I do all of them at the same time? If we're all in favor of that, okay. Now, do I hear a second to that motion? I will second. Okay, second by Commissioner Wiggins. Um, and I don't know, we've never really had this too contentious. Is there any discussion on the motion? And that's basically a motion to retain current officers for the 2020 year. Uh, any discussion on that motion before we vote? Okay, all those, so the motion was for Chair Faulkner for Vice Chair Pfizer, for Secretary Peterman. All those in favor, raise a hand, please. Eight, and that's eight in favor, which leaves 
None opposed, no abstentions. Yeah, I always feel a little odd voting for myself, but I'm certainly <laughs> in favor of <laughs> Pfizer and Peterman, so it, yeah, no, you got it. What's that? You got to take the chafe with the wheat, something? I don't know. Okay. I don't know where that one came from. Sorry. All right. The second item this evening, I don't know whether it'll even really require a motion, but the uh, meeting calendar for 2020. Mr. Cataret, I think it would be appropriate for you to introduce or discuss this for a minute. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. The staff has prepared the 2020 meeting calendar showing the different filing deadlines and different legal requirements for publication uh, for both planning commission meetings and city council meetings. This is the calendar that we provide to the public and to applicants to follow um, their application process from beginning to end. Of note, on uh, the 2020 calendar, there are no known conflicts, holidays, or anything that conflicts with our proposed schedule. So I would uh, recommend that uh, if, unless there's any changes to this, just wanted to, this is more of a uh, informational item unless you have a correction that you want a direct staff to make. Sounds pretty good and pretty, sounds very good and no controversial. Items, any any discussion from commission? Mr. Innerline, what do you think? Should we have a formal motion to accept the calendar or is that appropriate? It, yes, that's probably best. Okay, um, we can do it, that. If someone wants to make that motion, yes. Yep, Commissioner Wiggins is chomping at the bit. Right, we'll make a motion to accept the Raymore Planning and Zoning Commission 2020 meetings and deadlines calendar as presented by city staff. Second. That was Commissioner Kia, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought so. But uh, all right, motion on the floor by Commissioner Wiggins, second by Commissioner Kia to accept the 2020 Planning and Zoning Commission meetings calendar as presented by staff. Is there any further discussion on that item? All those in favor, raise a hand, please. Thank you, so again, eight in favor, none opposed, no abstentions, and one gesundheit. <laughs> You're welcome, sorry. Uh, let's see, okay. And that takes us to the third item under new business this evening, case 19024, Sixth Amendment to the Creekmore Memorandum of Understanding this case does require public hearing, so please don't let me blow right past that. And uh, uh, Mr. Cataret, I guess it's appropriate to have the applicant present first. Okay. And representing Creekmore, please give us your name and. Good evening. Oh. Good evening, Steve Warger with Renaissance Infrastructure Consulting. 5015 Northwest Canal Street, Riverside, Missouri. Here tonight on behalf of the Creek of Cooper Land Development, who has developed this uh, Creekmore subdivision going back to like 2004 or something when we first, when they first started that. Uh, the area we're talking about would be in the south easterly corner along Madison that is currently, according to the preliminary plat shown as a duplex multi-family type area. Uh, what we're proposing now uh, is to come in with single family lots, but the lots would be smaller in size, 42 feet wide, thereabouts to 47 foot wide on the corner lots, 118 foot deep approximately, mm -hmm. and uh, go in and try and get the, basically that's to uh, get to a point to where we can try and get some price points down and we think that's a good selling model. This will be sold to a, a builder that does this now. I believe it's Summit, but I'm not for sure on that. But they would be developing it, uh, Cooper would develop the, the property as it is and in the, in, in the other uh, the Summit or wherever it is, the builder would build the houses and sell the houses. This would, the first phase of this would be approximately 40 lots. It'd be right up along the cul-de-sac that goes up along Madison and it would go westerly 
to about the creek. It would not cross the creek at this point. There's a drainage way or creek that feeds into the lake at that point. We would not cross that in this phase and then would be potentially another phase, second phase later on, depending on how this goes. Uh, with that, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions related to the uh, amendment or anything else with this uh, proposed uh, project. You will be seeing a final plat hopefully in the next couple of weeks if mm. this is approved. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, I'm fine for the minute and of course you know we'll always call you back if we sure. develop some more questions while Mr. Warger's at the podium. Commissioners, does anyone have a question for him right now? No, okay, we're gonna, uh, sorry. Was the, Commissioner Arkea. Sorry, yeah, Commissioner Arkea. Uh, was the uh, change a recommendation of Summit Homes or was this your all's idea to change it from? I think it was, I think it was both. I mean, just to be more sellable and try this product, which they're having luck and in the metro area, there's more luck towards this type of uh, development. Again, trying to get a price point down, I think. Okay. Anything else for Mr. Warger? All right, Mr. Cataret, if you would, give us the staff report on case 19024, please. Yes, sir, thank you. As Mr. Warger indicated, the request filed uh, is for the sixth amendment to the memorandum of understanding for the Cooper uh, subdivision. Since we are looking to amend the preliminary plan and the MOU, it does require a public hearing that was advertised for this evening. Do you want to enter in the record the notice of that publication in the journal newspaper, our Unified Development Code, our Growth Management Plan, the staff report that was submitted to you this evening, as well as the proposed language contained in the Sixth Amendment to the MOU. So the uh, Sixth Amendment um, proposes three specific changes. Uh, as Mr. Warger indicated, the, the first proposal is to modify the preliminary development plan that's currently in effect. Um, this was uh, adopted back in uh, June of 2006, included in your packet. Um, this preliminary development plan, as Mr. Warger indicated, shows the two-family land use in the uh, southeast corner of the uh, Creekmore development. Uh, the land area we're proposing to uh, change the land use classification on is about 17 and a half acres and we would replace the two family designation to a single family designation the second change uh, in the mou is is uh, there's a land use summary table for the entire subdivision with this land use change if it's approved we simply wanted to uh, keep up to date that land use summary sheet which shows the different acreages and percentage of land use overall for the entire uh, Creekmore subdivision including the maximum number of units um, as has been indicated in the past uh, Creekmore is well below the maximum number of units that they were initially approved for back in 2004 and the third change in the MOU actually establishes the development standards that would apply to this style of home. So the different phases of Creek Moore, you look at the villages of Southern Hills, Southern Hills and Westbrook and Edgewater, there are different development standards that apply, lot sizes, uh, things of that sort. And so with this proposed land use um, for this 17 and a half acres, we identified what those minimum development standards are. And again, uh, understand that these are the minimums, certainly um, as with the other phases in Creek Moore, uh, there might be a few lots that are at that minimum. Typically they go, they go larger than that, um, but we always like to have that established minimum to make sure that nothing falls below that. The, uh, again, that preliminary development uh, plan is part of the uh, MOU. Uh, it was initially adopted when Creek Moore was approved in 2004. There's been five amendments. Um, this would not be the first area where it was uh, initially planned for two family that the change went to single family. Uh, the villages of Southern Hills, uh, that small subdivision was actually uh, initially approved for multifamily, for fourplexes and the two developments either side of the clubhouse uh, facilities were planned for two family that was changed to single family so this has been somewhat of the um, practice that 
that Cooper's had is, is although they initially came in with single, two-family, multi-family, uh, they keep going to only single-family development. But even if this land use should change, um, there are still two-family areas uh, remaining as indicated on the uh, preliminary development plan. The uh, staff has submitted proposed findings of fact regarding this amendment to the uh, MOU and to the preliminary plan itself. The staff uh, does recommend that the uh, commission accept those proposed findings of fact and forward this case uh, 19024, which is our sixth amendment to the Creekmore MOU to the city council with a recommendation of approval. With this request, we did uh, do the notification <laughs> that's required under city code uh, to property owners uh, within at least 185 feet of the perimeter of this. So we, we did go beyond that along Madison Street to try to identify those properties most directly uh, impacted with this change of land use. I wanna note that the overall layout um, for the subdivision um, really doesn't change. The location of the access road onto Madison Street is, is proposed to be uh, almost at the same location that it was initially planned for, as well as the cul-de-sac layout and working with the amenities, you know, the stream corridor uh, and the existing golf course hole that is to the uh, northwest. So they're trying to fit the land use around those particular developments. I did include uh, in your packet the actual exhibit H, which is again, the minimum development standards the conceptual layout of what the lots uh, would be. If this were to be, were to be per, uh, approved, uh, the developer has come in with a conceptual plan that I wanted to include in the packet to show the general lot layout uh, where they would have, uh, again, two phases, but show the, uh, the main uh, street going through with the two cul-de-sacs off of that. As well as um, I showed you a few of the conceptual home designs that the uh, one of the pr uh, prospective purchasers of the property would be. Summit Homes is um, driving this request, if you would, and that it is a proposal they've done in a few other communities. They feel that it would um, enhance their presence in Raymore. They, of course, have been building at Eagle Glen, been building in Creekmore. Um, they've built at High Point, as well as other phases of Creekmore, uh, Cunningham. Uh, this would be a, a little different home style and different development than what they currently have within the city. Uh, they've indicated to us that that their buyer pool is looking for this type of this type of home. Again, a a, a very nice home, just on a smaller lot footprint. Um, and so, that will conclude uh, staff report at this time. Thank you, Mr. Ketteret. And <clears throat> excuse me. Before I open the public hearing. I will ask once we open the public hearing, anyone wishing to speak on case 19024, Sixth Amendment to the Creekmore Memorandum of Understanding. We'll be given a chance to come up to the podium. If you choose to do so, we'd ask that you give us your name and address for the record. And I don't think it'll be a problem tonight. Typically we ask that you limit your comments to, I don't know, somewhere three to five minutes and and Please don't repeat if someone has already stated the position, just note that. So having said all of that mouthful, I will open the public hearing on case 19024. Would anyone like to speak on the case? Going once, going twice, and I will close the public hearing on 19024 and open the floor for discussion by the commissioners. Commissioner Wiggins. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cataract, just a couple quick questions. Um, I guess maybe one's, one's definitely for you. Um, so looking at the map on page 30, <clears throat> there's still two remaining sections, one directly to the west of the area of conversation and then one in the far northeast corner that are listed as two family. Um, uh, there isn't anything that would, uh, I mean, Cooper Land Development could come and, and decide to convert those as well to this style or other single family. There, is, there isn't anything, to my knowledge, at least in the MOU that requires that there be a certain percentage of two family, correct? It uh, could all be converted to single family if so desired. That, that is correct, sir. They, yeah. If they did want to change from the two family land use to any other land use, uh, or they wanted to convert any of this 
remaining undeveloped single family land use to another land use, it would come back through this same process where they have to request to amend the preliminary plan. Sure, but there, there's no requirement that states that they have to incorporate some amount of two or multi-family. There, there was not. The MOU just specifies the amount of open space they have to maintain, Very but good. as far as land use, no, they don't have to maintain X percentage of two family or any other land use. Okay, uh, and then my second question, which you might be able to answer, otherwise maybe um, uh, the rep, Mr. The, Warder. Mr. Warder, yes, I, I'm not sure who would be best, but so these are um, it's similar to other parts of the development. Summit Custom Homes is going to come in and develop it, and then they are selling to individuals um, their plan is so they're, it's not being sold to a property management company, um, you know, companies that are coming in as a realist or a rental focus. It is similar to the rest of the neighborhood where it's sold as individual homeowners, not companies or uh, management property management companies at, at this point in time I can say that's the intent of course nothing limits that or prohibits that if that were to be the case what we're presenting to you this evening uh, again Cooper land development making the request on behalf of summit who has expressed an interest in putting this product within within the subdivision so I say the intent because that is that is what is driving this forward uh, but if we change the land use to single family and Summit suddenly says um, they're not interested and if we've established these gallery style uh, lot sizes in the MOU, they're in the MOU. It's there for any, develop any builder to come in and, and utilize um, if Cooper decides to sell the land to them. But again, uh, I present the Summit Homes information sure. because that is who is driving this and that is who is interested in doing okay. this. But the, like, I was just trying to get past the part that the intent is to sell them as individual homes to individual owners. I'm, I'm getting a, a head shake from Ms. Warder, so that, that's, that was all. That's, that was sufficient for my, my inquiry. Thank you. Commissioner Arkea, uh, you noted that the access street off of Madison changes slightly. Um, does, does the land use to the south of that access road, was, does that have any impact on is that like a home with acreage that leads up to that so it doesn't really change you know that neighborhood in any shape or which any way shape or form uh, that's correct yeah there's a large uh, acreage tract directly to the south a uh, single family home a uh, large single family home uh, but yeah nothing would change other than the fact that instead of having uh, potential duplexes to the north it'd be single family homes mm -hmm. Mr. Catteret, if you would, I'd like a quick memory jogger. So if this were uh, not in a PUD, if, if this were uh, just an R2 zoned property in the city somewhere, am I correct that code today would permit construction of a single family residence on the R2 zoning? It's simply, it wouldn't work the other way. If it were R1 zoning, we wouldn't permit a, an R2. But would it work the other way? Would an R2 zoning permit less than an R2? It, it would, sir, yes. We made that change with the UDC. Right. So the R2 okay. zoning allows both single family or two family. Right. So I'm not proposing it. I'm just curious. But since Creekmore is a PUD, that's a different animal somewhat. I wondered with R2 zoning, could Creekmore build single family residences? without this change to the MOU if they chose? Uh, they could not. It, it is different with the PUD classification. So since it's the land use is designated to family, that's what the land use would need to be, okay. uh, which is, again, precipitating the change right. request this evening. Good. Thanks, sir. Other questions or comments about? I'll go ahead and make a motion if that's okay, Commissioner. Yeah, sure. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to accept the staff proposed findings of fact and forward case number 19024, the Sixth Amendment to the Creekmore Memorandum of Understanding to the City Council with recommendation for approval. Second. Sounds good. Uh, all right, motion by Commissioner Urquia, second by Commissioner Wiggins to accept staff proposed findings of fact on case 
19024, Sixth Amendment to Creekmore MOU, and forward the case to City Council with the recommendation of approval. That sound right? Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, raise a hand, please. One, two, three, four, seven, eight. Eight in favor, none opposed, no abstentions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and we will move on again. once again. Let's see. All right. Mr. Anderline, looks like you're up. It's time for City Council report if you would like to give that to us. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a few points of order that are of interest to this commission. Um, number one, Mr. Uh, Mayor Turnbow has reappointed uh, Commissioner Bowie, who is uh, absent tonight, has reappointed him as Ward 1 seat to this commission. Um, point number two, Mr. Mayor has reappointed Calvin Auckland uh, to Ward 4 seat as uh, on this commission. Um, so we would congratulate uh, both of those uh, individuals to their reappointment. Um, number three, the City Council has unanimously adopted the 2020 City Budget. I know, of course, you all have had some say and, and some issues on, uh, on that budget as well. So um, the City Council has unanimously adopted that 2020 budget. And finally, the uh, City Council, something that was before this commission on October 15th of this year, um, the rezoning of Grant Drive and Adams Street. Um, it was approved by this commission seven to zero, and it has been unanimously approved by the city council. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on. Mr. Cataret, if you'd like to give us a staff report, we're all ears. Thank you, sir. Looking at the calendar of upcoming meetings um, that was included in the monthly report for October, if you see our next meeting is scheduled for December 3rd, the report indicates we had two items of business, the Fox Ridge Business Park, which is the uh, plat of the single lot that would be uh, done for the proposed high V fast and fresh. Uh, so it'd be the one lot at the corner of Fox Ridge Drive and, and Foxwood Drive, as well as the actual site plan for the High V Fast and Fresh. Uh, High V has requested to uh, move those two items to the December 17 agenda. They're working on making um, modifications to their site plan they submitted. Uh, what, 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 what's happened in this scenario, our, our calendar that you just approved <laughs> sets a very tight time frame for site plan. Mm -hmm. It's really a 30 day window where somebody comes in, they have to submit all their drawings on the application date, staff reviews them, um, uh, planning staff, engineering, fire district. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide comments back. Uh, to the applicant that they have to quickly revise those and get it back to us in a timely fashion to place in your packets on your agenda. Occasionally that time frame based upon the comments uh, can, can be too short and I think that's what happened with the applicant here. There were some changes that do need to be made and so they simply have asked to move it back to December 17th. Mm -hmm. I would like to keep December 3rd open. I do believe uh, we will be having a final plat that um, would need to be considered that evening. The Kentucky Road relocation a project that's been part of our general obligation bond approval. We've talked about it for many years now. Uh, we believe the plat to actually uh, uh, dedicate what would be the right of way for that roadway from the two different property owners uh, would be ready for your consideration. So we'd like to keep that December 3rd open for that. We expect the flat to be delivered uh, yet this week. And with timing, we need to get that moving forward on, to, on uh, through the process. So I imagine that we were all expecting to meet on December 3rd. So if we do, we're ready. If we slip, You'll let us know. I will let you Sound know. Right? It will be a short meeting on the third, but it would be an important meeting uh, if that item's on the agenda. Us. I never, <laughs> I never say, oh, it'll be a short <laughs> meeting. That's, that's, that's right. So that's what we have currently, again, um, okay. on your calendar. Nothing scheduled yet for your January meetings. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Mr. Rokas, could you update us on engineering? Well, I was just gonna give you one update tonight, uh, tonight and that was on the Bristol culvert. And I talked about it last time that about 12 years ago, the culvert was started but not completed. <laughs> Yeah. If you go out there now, you'll see a 98-foot culvert fully completed. And now we're going to try to put dirt against it and let the dirt sit over the winter and build the road in the spring to connect Saddlebrook over to Bristol. Be happy to answer any questions you might have. And it doesn't seem like that many years ago. Wow. Patience rewarded. So it started before your time with the city. Wow. Uh, Commissioners, have any questions before I open the floor for public comment? Okay, so uh, at this time, one last opportunity for the public to speak. Same request as before. If you choose to come forward to the podium, please give us your name and address for the record. And seeing no one, I don't get to bang the gavel this time. So let's open the floor for commission member comment and uh, Mayor Turnbow can I put you on the spot first this evening sure um, I don't know if any of y'all heard or or made it but Ward 4 uh, members were treated to a uh, actually the the entire community was treated to a presentation I thought maybe Greg might bring it up tonight over at city over at the Centerview building uh, with regard to Mo Dot's presentation for the two roundabouts that are planned for uh, Prairie Lane and Ward Road uh, they brought their uh, plans up and uh, but Greg what's the time um, is there any kind of a time frame on that um, they're supposed to be working on it for the 2021 budget year so that would be basically a year from this October okay or last month yeah okay so it'd probably be in that fiscal year so that'd probably be the next summer after that excellent and in addition to that, uh, Greg has been working feverishly with the county to put together a, a build grant uh, for the state and the federal government that would assist us with putting the funds together that are necessary to widen I-49 and uh, fix the bridge at 58. So we're excited about how that's moving forward through gaining some momentum. Um, we have put together some other financial um, kind of um, roadmap for uh, the cities in the area getting uh, letters of support from surrounding communities uh, for that effort and things seem to be falling into place. Our initial uh, contacts were extremely positive with our federal officials, uh, both of our senator's office and our congresswoman's office. So we are really excited that that might actually gain some momentum for, uh, that's a couple of years down the road too, but uh, I mean, it does start the process moving forward. And then uh, last night, the uh, council uh, met in uh, work session to discuss what uh, chapter 100 means to the two projects at the venue and to um, the Van Trust. Van Trust is a much larger uh, give and take uh, process there than what the venue project is, although there is a, uh, a, a, a bit of, a, of a, an abatement, uh, very small in nature, uh, that's occurring with the venue project, which are the townhomes that are going into um, there at Dean and uh, North Cass Parkway. So we're excited about that. We're hoping that uh, soon they'll be able to come back with final uh, plat on that, that will show us design work. They're actually considered redesign because they heard from the community and we're hoping that uh, the potential for that changing from a modern contemporary to a more traditional style will ease their minds as we move forward with that uh, project. So we're, we're very excited about what's going on out there at North Cass Parkway. Uh, we've in fact had uh, a contact yesterday from the Kansas City Area Development Council. There is a, a, um, a potential tenant for the Van Trust project if that uh, moves forward fairly quickly. We're excited about that and they're looking at us very seriously. And then we had a meeting yesterday morning uh, with a group out of Springfield that's interested in that location as well. So a lot of interest going on out there in the North Cass Parkway um, uh, I-49 corridor. I just wanted to pass that along. Yeah. That's all I have, thank you. That was very informative, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think I'll bounce to the other end, uh, Secretary Peterman. I don't have anything. <laughs> all right. Back to you, Commissioner Kia. I uh, just want to thank the staff for all their hard work um, and uh, to wish all of my fellow commissioners a wonderful Thanksgiving. 
um, and the city staff as well. And the mayor, I guess. I'll, I'll include you in that. And have, uh, a, have a happy thank Thanksgiving. You. All right, thank you. Commissioner Armstrong. I'll second the happy Thanksgiving and thank you, <laughs> staff. All right, let's see, I'm back to Commissioner Acklin. I just want to make one correction on the uh, pronunciation of my name. It's, it's, it's Acklin. I appreciate the staff and everything you do. Happy Thanksgiving as well. Yep, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wiggins. Um, most of my things have already been said. Um, so I had Thanksgiving and the 4958 written on my paper. Um, if anybody hasn't watched the work session where Mr. Rokos uh, goes into very extensive detail from about six weeks ago, the work session, it is phenomenal the amount of work that our city staff is putting into um, assisting our community as a whole, everybody in, in Cass County is because we, I know he's done a ton of legwork, but this is going to affect multiple cities, multiple jurisdictions, counties, whatever. And um, it, it's it, it's a great presentation, and also was kind of funny because I believe it wasn't the governor or the attorney general somebody coming down this way and got stuck in rush hour traffic there and got to experience the bottleneck. Oh. So it, that was uh, perfect timing on that. Um, but yeah, thank you, city staff, for everything you do. I know um, that there's some great things that are coming. Um, some stuff that's kind of been uh, whispered in and, and stuff that uh, I'm sure will be coming before us soon that'll make a lot of people happy. So um, thank you for everything you guys do and everybody have a wonderful and safe Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Vice Chair Pfizer. Okay, first I'd like to say I look forward to being your Vice Chair for another year, um, filling in when uh, Commissioner Faulkner is not here. <laughs> Um, and second, I want to remind everybody that next week is the lighting of the mayor's Christmas tree, I believe Tuesday at 6. Thank you. Yeah, I forgot and that. I, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. I'm, oh, I'm here for the current event. Thank you. Um, Thanks for covering me. And <laughs> I'm going to say it's at TV Hannah again yeah. this year. Okay. Um, so um, it's always a lot of fun, and um, you'll see Santa probably and um, get what's, cookies. What's and the weather supposed to be? It doesn't matter. It's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, it's always, it's always a lot of fun. It always makes me feel really like a part of the, the, the town and it's like a Hallmark movie kind of thing. So um, everyone should go. Well, I was just going to say, and fingers crossed, we might actually have the ice rink open. Oh. We, we received the, re -equ the equipment. Oh, wow. Don't know if it's yet been installed, but I asked uh, Mr. Mustine if there was a possibility it could be up. He said there's a possibility. So uh, you might bring your skates and leave them in a the car just in case. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Since I missed the last meeting, I probably missed the better opportunity to thank Mr. Grass for the years that he's supported us. And, and of course, you're always there behind the scenes, if not on the front lines, Mr. Cataret. But uh, I, I do hope word gets back to Mr. Grass that even though we're in good hands, we still miss him. He brought a lot to the table. I'm looking forward to him bringing even more to the table as economic development director because he certainly has a good basis to build on here, I think. So Mr. Cataret, thanks to you. Mr. I'll get this right in a minute, Enterline, uh, and Mr. Rokos, uh, and uh, thanks to the commissioners. Uh, you know, it's very important that we have a quorum and keep business going. It may not seem quite as urgent to us, but when you've got developers with projects with money on the line, I think it's important for us to keep things going as well as we can, and and uh, that's that's uh, not something I just take for granted. Okay, that was probably more than I needed to say. So I would entertain a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting. So moved. A second. Second. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Motion by Commissioner Kia. Second by Commissioner Wiggins to adjourn and. Show of hands, please. All in favor? Four, eight. Thank you. I can count. It just takes a second. Eight in favor, none opposed, no abstentions. And good night to all. Thank you. Huh.